Good morning and aloha, and welcome to Law Across the Sea. I am Mark Shklov. I am the host of Law Across the Sea. And today we are very privileged to have the Attorney General of the State of Hawaii as our guest, Douglas Chin. Uh, Doug Chin is the son of Chinese immigrants. Uh, he has worked in the Honolulu Prosecutor's Office, served as the Managing Director of the City and County of Honolulu, and has been in private law practice. In 2015, Governor David Ige appointed Doug Chin to become the state's Attorney General. Most recently, Attorney General Chin has been in the news representing the state of Hawaii in a lawsuit against President Trump's executive order, which banned travel from certain Muslim-majority nations and suspended the United States refugee program. Attorney General Chin, welcome. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. Aloha. It's, Aloha. Uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like you first to maybe tell us a little bit about your background, br briefly about your background, sure. how you got to Hawaii. Because I know you weren't, you weren't born I, in Hawaii. I, I wasn't born here, but um, uh, my, my parents weren't born in the U.S. They came from China. Uh, my, my mom's father was actually a, a four-star general in the Chinese National Army. So it's not the communists, but the, uh, the, um, the national side. And, uh, and so after the communists took over, then uh, my parents both, uh, they left communist China and they came out uh, to the U.S. Uh, they, had a, they were taken care of, taken in by a host family uh, in Yakima, Washington. We were just talking about that. Uh, that's over in the central part of Washington state. And, um, a very nice area, by the way. Right. Very, very beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's uh, you know what. A, so what a difference to go what? all the way from China <laughs> wow. uh, to to come out there. To like you know, it's not even Seattle. It's it's like in the very middle of, <laughs> of Washington State, where they're just growing apples and and uh, very homogenized community, um, to be sure. And uh, and actually, uh, I was my name actually came from the the host family, uh, wow. the the father who uh, he was a he was a doctor so in, Doug, the, in the neighborhood. So that's where I got the name wow. Doug w Douglas was was from that. So uh, you know, so I, I think they really appreciated that, oh, that family. Apparently. Um, anyway, my, my parents were uh, they they settled in in Seattle and and uh, I was born and raised there. Um, uh, along with my sister, so uh, yeah. So actually, one of the th I'll just say a parenthetical statement, which is that uh, with everything happening now with this uh, with this case that has you know gotten me talking about th this issue and thinking about this issue, it really it really actually makes me um, appreciate and and feel a lot more grateful for the the, the sacrifice and the you know the 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 risk that my parents took when they uh, when they came over from China to uh, to come to the U.S. I mean, I think they they really uh, they had to leave behind their family. My my father didn't even see his brother for the 40 years um, mm. after that, um, just because of the the differences uh, in in the, the countries. So uh, pretty amazing. Yeah, but during that period of time, the the relationship between China and the United States was. Uh on hold at best, correct. Uh, correct. You could say, uh, right. if not black, right, yeah. right. And, and so that that's a big part of uh, you know a big part of even the the discussion that, that's happening right now is that uh, prior to 1965, I was born in '66. Uh, so prior to 1965, uh, then the the U.S. actually had a lot of race-based classifications to to keep people out, or or even more than that. Uh, nation of origin classification. So that was uh, the time of the Chinese Exclusion Acts. Uh, um, so you know, my parents uh, came in under uh, you know an extreme vetting regime that that brought them in, um, but they were also uh, coming in under a presumption uh, that there was something wrong with them. And and that law got abolished in 1965 by Congress uh, in favor of uh, of. Basically saying, okay, you know, we will we can put in restrictions on immigration. You know, we can we can tighten the the door. We can tighten the, the sleeve as much as we want. Um, however, uh, we're not going to do any sort of uh, nation-based classifications that that um, that unfortunately seems to be happening right now. So you're you're familiar with that from your own personal experience from right. your own parents, right? Although I'll be honest, yeah, I, I don't know if it was really something that you know that really occurred to me all the time. I, I think until 
uh, until we, we see what's happening right now. Maybe because uh, a lot of us for the last 50 years, a half century, uh, have really taken uh, taken what we've had for granted. Right. right, right. And our parents don't talk about it. They don't. I mean, they I, don't. Yeah, I understand yeah, that. Yeah. They, they, they're, they, they keep their mouths shut and right. they just move on with right. life. Yeah. So as you can see, I'm pretty Americanized. My, my, my <laughs> sister and I are both Americanized and, and I think it really, you know, and I think a lot of it had to do with their, their deliberate decision that they weren't going to include us in the, the, the suffering that they went through um, just so that we could be doing what we're doing. But you're old enough now to think about it. Yeah. At least yeah. think about it, right? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, now, in, in, in 2015, you were appointed by the governor to be the attorney general right. of our state. Yeah. Now, what, what, what is that job? Who do, what does it entail? <laughs> and who are your clients right. Right, as, the, as the, the attorney general of right. the state of Hawaii? Yeah. Well, I can say this. I, I've lived here for 27 years. Uh, I've had uh, about 15 years in, in public service, mostly with the city and county. I, I was a prosecutor for uh, most of that time. Um, and then eventually I was the, the city manager, the managing director uh, under Mayor Peter Carlisle. Um, being the, the state attorney general uh, basically means that your, your client uh, is the, 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 the entire state of Hawaii, meaning that I, I'm thinking about um, state of Hawaii's interests uh, that, that includes law enforcement, so that's that's a part of my job. Um, but but it also includes thinking about uh, uh, the state of Hawaii from a civil perspective. So from civil rights uh, to constitutional rights to uh, to uh, uh, other uh, civil liabilities that, that the state has to face. So uh, all the. All the citizens are your clients, or is that right, or, you know, or, the, or is it the right. state yeah. itself, or what, what is that? Right, I appreciate that distinction because then everybody says, "Well, I'm the, <laughs> if, I'm the, if I'm everybody's client, then how can I? How can right, I do? Right, you right. know, obviously, obviously, I might have to take positions that some people will feel great about, and some people won't feel so great about. Uh, the the better way to answer is that I, I'm the I'm the lawyer for the collective state of Hawaii, or, or the state of Hawaii uh, as a as an organization. So. Um, so state government, um, and uh, and so yes, so part of part of those duties um, is enforcing the the laws of the state of Hawaii as well as its constitution and the laws of the United States, uh, honestly, and, and it's also the constitution and laws, the constitution of the U.S. as well as Hawaii. Okay, now we're going to get into that right now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, you've been in the news. Yeah. Lately, yeah, yeah. lately, you've been in the news talk uh, about a lawsuit against the president of the United States right. for an executive order, and as I understand the executive order, and it's kind of it, there, there's been a couple, actually, there, I, I, as I understand it, there, it it restricts travel from certain mu Muslim nations right. to the United States for 90 days, right. and it. Uh, puts on hold, I guess, the refugee program for 120 days. Right. And, right. and, and w what is that all about? What is the state doing? What are we in? Why are you doing this? Right. What, what, please, please tell us what's going on here. Right. Well, yeah, the, the timing couldn't be any more appropriate or, or I guess, inappropriate for, for something like this to happen. But uh, you know, 75 years ago, uh, I think a lot of people in Hawaii remember um, how we, we did have a president. It was President Roosevelt who, mm -hmm. uh, during World War II, uh, had, uh, for, uh, for reasons of national security, uh, basically ordered, uh, did an executive order that uh, required Japanese Americans, German Americans, and Italian Americans all to go into internment camps. And, and that included citizens. So uh, it included taking um, uh, people who had citizen rights and, and, and stripping them of those rights. All in the um, all in the name of national security, a and I think what was even the most chilling about reading that executive order uh, from from back then was the was the reasoning behind it. So it wasn't just that it was national security; um, it was actually saying that the, that the reason why we're we're um, taking this drastic action against this nation um, is because even though there's people here amongst us uh, who are in the U.S., um, we we don't know which ones to trust. You know, so we don't. So in other words, we don't know uh, whether uh, whether one person is for the government or one person who's against the government. Um, so that was one reason. And then the other uh, the other thing that was put in there is they said um, culturally, they're, they're, uh, that they belong to a culture um, that is inconsistent 
with what the, the United States mm. is all about. Okay. Um, and so uh, when you actually put that in the framework of, of what's happening now, it, it's a dog whistle. This is just 120 days. Uh, this is just, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, I, I think people might say insensitively, this is just, you know, Muslim nations in the Middle East. Um, why should we care about something like that? Right. But, y you know, um, to, to me, uh, and, I, and I think to, to a lot of people that, that have uh, really thought about this, um, this, is, this is a dark path that, that we don't want to go down. You know, in other words, we, we have a new president. Uh, he may have policies that we disagree with, um, but when, when it comes to uh, discriminating against people based upon their national origin uh, or uh, discriminating against people ba based on their religion, um, that that becomes something that that we all should be very concerned about, and so um, and so that's where uh, it became uh, incumbent upon me to, to to really take some action. Okay, all right. So what action are, are you taking? What are, what are you Great. doing? Great. Yeah. So uh, so what we've done is uh, is we've asked for uh, along with some other states, um, the state of Hawaii has uh, has asked the courts uh, to basically sort this out, to take a look at it. I mean, I, I'm probably soft pedaling it a little bit, but it, it's, it's an injunction, um, and, but you're, that's you're, the only way that... You're trying to get it to be stopped. Correct, correct. Trying to get the travel ban executive order to be stopped uh, on the basis that uh, it's discriminatory uh, against people based upon their national origin, uh, it's discriminatory against them based upon their religion, and, uh, and also based on the fact that, uh, that um, the, the president and the administration can't really take back uh, the statements that have been made all the way up until now. Uh, so, so essentially what you had was uh, back in as early as 2015 uh, when President Trump was on the campaign trail. Uh, he would, it's actually him who came up, he, it's, he, he's the one who came up with the words Muslim ban. Yeah. So that, that wasn't a word that, that the opponents came up with or the term that they came up with. Uh, you know, he, he said that. He said, you know, we, we need to ban Muslims from this nation. You know, there, there, are, there are Syrian refugees who are pouring in uh, and committing crimes. And, and uh, you know, if I be, when I become president, then I'm going to put a stop to that. Um, and uh, it didn't, it, those, those kinds of, um, you know, incendiary statements, uh, they didn't stop when he became the Republican nominee. Uh, it, it didn't stop when he uh, when he went on when the first executive order came out as president. He went on a, a broadcast network and, and said, you know, we're going to favor the Christians, we're going to let the Christians in, and we're not going to let in Muslims. Uh, you know, people might have you know people might think, well, you know, I, I have my own thoughts about that. You know, maybe it is good to to favor Christians. That's that you can have that opinion, but you can't do uh, an order. Uh, that violates uh, the, the laws and the constitutions of our, our state. Uh, that, that's really, or excuse me, of, of the country. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. it, it violates the laws of our state, but it, but it definitely violates the, the laws of, of the country. And, and so that's where we um, felt like we needed to, uh, you know, to check the president. And, and basically, uh, you know, that, that's the checks and balances system that we're all a part of. Okay, so you're one state. One state is doing this, Hawaii, and there's right. a few others. Sure. Right? So there's there's several other lawsuits that, that are going on. Uh, some of them are brought by uh, by um, individual plaintiffs. Some are brought up by by uh, you know, refugee awareness organizations. But another state that is involved right now is uh, Washington, uh, the state of Washington. Uh, General Bob, uh, Attorney General Bob Ferguson, um, has been doing that, and, and there's been several states that have joined him. And, and I want to go a little more into the basis of our lawsuit after our break. Okay, great. So we'll have a break right now. Great. Okay. Aloha Kako, I'm Marcia Joyner, and I'm inviting you to navigate the journey. We are discussing the end of life options, and we would really love to have you every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. right here. Aloha, this is Gordo the Texar here at Hibachi Talk. I want to thank you guys for joining us every week from uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon to 1.30 Hawaii time where we talk about tech. But this year we're kind of branching out and we're talking about all other interesting kinds of facts and figures. And uh, Andrew, my security guy, will, will be joining us as he always is, um, giving us a uh, weekly security tip. And we will also then have Angus giving us some gadgets and some things that's really starting to irritate his okole. So we're going to have him coming out as well. Anyway, Drew, do you have anything you want to say? Glad to be here, man. Happy to help. <laughs> there we go. Thanks again. Hibachi talk. We'll see you soon.
We are back with the Attorney General of the State of Hawaii and we have been talking about a lawsuit that the Attorney General has brought on behalf of the State of Hawaii against an executive order by the President of the United States. Now, the executive order, and I'm going to read it correctly, says that it is to protecting, it is protecting the nation from foreign terrorists entry into the United States. End quote. Now, Attorney General Chin, isn't that a valid justification? What's wrong with that? That's a great title, uh, and, <laughs> and I think uh, I think that that's actually a great goal for for a president to have. I, th I think President Obama cared about that that goal as well as well as President Bush and and every other president. So so I, I don't begrudge um, the federal government or or even the the current president for. Uh, for wanting to protect the, the nation from terrorists. Uh, a, a lot of us have that fear, and, and some people feel it even more deeply uh, than, than others. Um, I, I think where the, the, the problems start occurring is once you get beyond the title and, and start to read beyond to what goes on, because it, essentially what you have is this, uh, it used to be seven nations, Muslim right. majority nations, now it's six. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's basically, uh, it, it, I'm going to say basically, it's, it, the, way, the way it's worded, it, it now sets up this, this system where uh, if you were from these six nations, you're presumptively a terrorist. Right? So it doesn't matter if you're, um, if you're a baby, it doesn't matter if you're the spouse of a cardiologist who lives here in the U.S. or a fiancé of a cardiologist. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're the mother-in-law of uh, you know, the, someone who's prominent in our community, in the Muslim community, um, as we have our individual plaintiff uh, who's involved. Um, those people are all presumptively a terrorist. And so within this new system that's been set up, um, the, the federal government has set up a, a waivers and exemptions case-by-case -case basis uh, that has no standards other than the fact that we're going to presume you're a terrorist and then you're going to have to get through everything. Well, that, that, that first part is really uh, problematic uh, for us. So, um, but why? Right. What, what, what does it do? How does right. it violate our, our law or our constitution? Sure. Can't the president do this? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, and, and I, I will say this. If I were just a commentator and I weren't a, a lawyer, I, I think I, I'd, I'd go right after just go, go right after the uh, the, the lack of logic behind it. So, so I think there, there's plenty of uh, material out there about how uh, th there's nothing about these six nations uh, other than the fact that President Trump doesn't have businesses working, you know, in, in those places. There's nothing about these six nations that that are that are particularly damaging in comparison to uh, Egypt, which is still okay, or, or uh, Libya, you know, not Libya, but Egypt or or other uh, Saudi, Arabia, Saudi Arabia places yeah. like that. Um, so, uh, so there's a there's a lack of logic okay. that that's existing, but I'm not even approaching it from that standpoint because you know what you you could have presidents that are illogical you know from a policy standpoint that that's fine, um, but from a legal standpoint, mm -hmm. the Immigration and Nationality Act specifically in 1965 said that uh, you cannot uh, discriminate against. We're doing away with this racially biased. Um, you know, statistically faulty system of nation-based discrimination. We're doing away with that. And that's what you talked right. about at the beginning of our program. As, right. as when your, your parents came in, they still had right. perhaps that problem. Right. Was still the law, but now the Congress right. has decided, no, we're not going to do right. that. So exactly, and, and so part of our legal argument uh, is, is actually another checks and balances argument. It, it's, just that, it, it's just that the president um, uh, doesn't have the authority to step into something that Congress has already set set forth in the Immigration and Nationality Act. So the easy way to think about that in social studies is, is just that Congress, that, that branch, they make the laws, and the executive branch, the president, enforces the laws. Mm -hmm. So, so what we're seeing in this executive order is the president is basically making a new immigration law that now lays on top of what Congress has already set out. Congress had standards about what is a terrorist. They, you know, there's actually, they had standards like uh, the, in the Immigration and Nationality Act, which says that if you have reasonable grounds to believe that somebody's a terrorist or, or you know, some sort of standard, like a reasonable suspicion or something like that. But, but instead, what we have now is this new standard of, but if you're from these six countries, you're, you are a terrorist. Because you right? are from a country like Syria, uh, or uh, when, uh, I, I think 
I Iraq was off was off it now. Right. But, uh, country, right. Certain countries, yeah. and that was because why why were they well, selected? Yeah, uh, they're uh, not I mean, a very good reason. And and, yeah. and so and actually the new executive order, actually in fairness, um, has uh, it, it's definitely papered better. The, the the other you know the first executive order was buck naked. Like it really had no data at, uh, at all to, to back up why these seven countries are there. So the, so the new executive order actually has um, some examples some of standards. people who've, yeah, who are people who committed crimes from some of the, these different, uh, these different countries. But even when we look at those examples of like, you know, these are people from Somalia who committed crimes, or these are people from Yemen who, who did something. Um, those, those isolated incidents are decades old. Like, right. like it's not even you know, in other words, if you really thought that this was such a big issue, you, you would have said it up front. And, and that's what's a little bit um, screwy about this whole thing is, is that it's, it's backwards. It's, you know, usually, uh, it, did you know that the, they, they actually have an executive order on executive orders, which kind of <laughs> describes, this is how executive orders usually come out. It, it, it's that usually an agency brings up a concern, you know, so they have data, they, they raise it to the attention of the president, and then, you know, and then the president is able to rely upon that past information in order to be able to make some sort of executive order. Um, this is the backwards. You know, in other words, he already said he had a Muslim ban. He tells Rudy Giuliani, who then tells the world, um, you know, uh, the president came and said, you know, I, I want to have a Muslim ban. Tell me how to do it legally. Mm -hmm. You know, that's all in the public record. And then now we are trying to fit in facts in order to be able to justify uh, a discriminatory intent. Now, I don't want to say something that you're not saying, but it sounds to me like you're saying that the president made a campaign promise that he's now trying to fulfill. Right. That he said, we're going to keep out, keep out Muslims, and he's looking for a way to do it, and he came up with these six or seven countries that are Muslim, right. dominated, or majority, right. and he said, well, we'll start there. Right. Is that is that right. an accurate way to say what you've You and said? I both don't know. Uh, we're we're really not in any place where we're qualified to say what you know what President what President Trump was thinking about. Um, but that's my guess. That's, the, <laughs> that's my guess, and I'll tell you why. It's because because I've been in I've been in government long enough to know about what happens behind the scenes. And mm -hmm. so one of the things that happened is between the first executive order and the second executive order, there were a lot of days, right? And so, uh, you know, they were supposed to come out within two days, yeah, and instead right, it right, took, right, you know, right. more than 30 uh, to come out with something. To me, I, I've been in government long enough to know that that means people were arguing behind the scenes mm -hmm. about what they were going to put out. And I think eventually what you still have is, is something that, you know, people, I, I think they got locked in. I think they got locked in and said, you know, we've, we've got to stick to these countries even though there's no basis for it. And so there's a lot of new justifications for it, but it's just not, not good enough. Well, you know, I think sometimes as lawyers, we do things, we see how things appear. And we sometimes have to address that because we can't guess what goes on in people's minds. Right, right. And so the appearance and what the after effects or the consequences of those appearances we sometimes address even though yes we cannot tell what's going inside what m motivates people and even though they say certain things as lawyers we are kind of trained to doubt <laughs> right, sometimes right, what they're right. saying and it, you know, right. there, there's a way to do it. You make it right. right. Do the right thing. Uh, and it doesn't appear that maybe that's what's happening in, in your opinion, right. right? Right. And it could be a, a, a lot. I mean, actually, I think if I gave the, the new administration every benefit of the doubt, and I think we, you know, we probably would all like to do that. It, it's, it, it's a lack of experience. Uh, it's a lot of people who are coming in that, that don't understand the different checks and balances and requirements of the government or the Constitution. Um, but I think, uh, but I think we, as the the checkers, <laughs> as the people who you know who are going to challenge it, we, we need to be able to raise this to uh, the the executive branch's intention that that you know this is not the right way to go about doing. It. If you if you already start excluding these six nations and and everybody's okay with that and everybody lets it go, where does uh, it go next? yeah, where does it go next? And mm -hmm. and I think uh, people would go berserk actually here if, if it was uh, if it was a different uh, well, set of well, countries. Well, okay, now let yeah. me uh, dive into that a little bit, okay? Uh, uh, we have other problems in Hawaii. Yes. We have homelessness, we have uh, environmental problems, we have bad roads, 
why are we spending money on this? Right. I mean, why are we ta why are we taking money from taxpayers, yeah, your, yeah. your clients, or, or your collective clients, right. and spending money? Why are we doing this? Yeah. I, I think really hard about this. First of all, it's within my my litigation budget to do this, and and actually the the whole uh, for the three budget cycles that I've gone through, um, I've never exceeded the. Um, the, the litigation budget, so it's it's within what's been allocated to me to be able to to do something like this. Uh, but I think even more than that, uh, th this is a, a serious constitutional um, and societal concern that that I think the people of Hawaii need to care about. Um, yeah, we we don't want to be uh, a state that that is silent uh, about this kind of discriminatory laws. Uh, we, we we can't be. Um, I, I actually. Um, you know, I, 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 it's probably too strong for me to say, but, but you know, I, I even feel like it's, it would be uh, disrespecting you know, what, what's happened in the past if we were to somehow repeat history by allowing things to uh, go in a certain discriminatory direction and to, to not say anything about it. Uh, you know, I, I do believe that's part of our role. You know, the president is not the king, he's not a dictator. Uh, we have a system of checks and balances. Uh, when we see something um, that's unconstitutional or discriminatory, uh, then by golly, we, we should we should challenge it. We should say something. Yeah. Because yeah. and a lot of uh, you were talking about the internment of Japanese right. during World War II by an executive order, right. and not many people stood up and talked at that right. point. Is that is that my impression of what you're saying? I, I too? don't think I could. Uh, I think I'd have a hard time um, knowing what to do. Yeah, I, I'd have a, I, you know, I don't mean to be overly dramatic, but I just, I, I'd have a hard time living with myself if I, if I hadn't said anything. You know, okay. just, I think that'd be difficult. Now, I, I want to, we, we only have a couple minutes left. Sure. You met with the president. I did, I did. So quickly, Please, I'll tell, tell you about tell that. Tell us about what that um, was like. You know, it, it was the night, it was the morning before he uh, addressed the joint session of Congress. So, so actually, if you recall, that was a very special day where, where he actually was, was presidential, was very civil. So he was in that tone as well. And I got the chance to be able to ask him about the upcoming travel ban and find out what was his thinking behind it, what was his purpose behind this travel ban executive order. And his answers were he wanted to make America safe again. It involved extreme vetting. Uh, which we know is a Muslim ban, but but he also said that we may not like it, but that was just a priority uh, of his. Kind of at a, at a talking points, you know, high level, um, you know. So, uh, but but I, I don't begrudge him for that e either. I, I, you know, I think ultimately he was cordial. Not, he was cordial. He was cordial. Uh, he asked me whether I was one of the, we were one of the states that sued him. I, I said yes, we did. But even that wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. You know, I'm going to get you now. It, you know, I think it really he was just trying to understand what the context was. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, so that was civil, uh, and in the same way, I, I think we need to civilly object and civilly, uh, respectfully, you know, uh, challenge the, these executive orders. And, and you seem to be doing that, and thank you very much. I appreciate your time this morning, and I know you're busy and have a meeting of attorney generals that's going on sure do. right now. Yeah, it's very exciting. There's many more things that we have in common than, than we have where we're apart. So this is a bipartisan group of Republicans and Democrats um, that are all meeting uh, in Honolulu, as previously scheduled. And so, so we're here this week to, to talk about the, the issues well, well, that we have in common, which are good ones. Good luck. And yeah.